uh, again, <coughs> uh, from friends, from the point there is a big difference between computing the inverse matrix and solving a linear system. Uh, the stability, if you remember the first actually where we discussed the uh, forward and backward stability of algorithms, and when we solve a linear system with finite precision arithmetic, um, we get, of course, the solution not of the original system, but of the system that is close to the original system. For example, at least by Russian precision, because the numbers are represented in memory, not, not in the exact form. And when you do, when you solve any system, for example, by using Gaussian elimination, you also make some floating point errors, and then you have some solution, which, is, which should be close to the original one. Uh, but of course, there is a constant how close the solution of the linear system that is obtained, that you obtain by the numerical algorithm is close to the solution of the linear system, uh, the, the real one. And this constant is exactly the condition number, so the condition number of the matrix measures the forward, forward stability of, of uh, solution of linear system with this matrix. And the main algorithm, the main workhorse for uh, solving linear system is Gaussian elimination, as we all know, but uh, we will cover questions about stability uh, of Gaussian elimination <coughs> and, uh, and so on. So called growth factor, which is, well, regarding how practical it is, it's, it's a separate discussion. If I do not forget, I will come back to that. Um, but at least it's good to know that uh, even Ga Gaussian elimination is a nice kind of stable algorithm. It, may, it might have problems. So linear system of matrix, I already said on basis two, numerical linear algebra, which, which appear everywhere, like in regression problems, and discretization of differential equations, and optimization, like everywhere. Everywhere in optimization, you need to solve linear systems. Depending on the number of uh, unknowns, this can be that linear systems with dense matrix. So, so typically, the number of equations is thousands, you do not need to have any special, you do not need to have any special tools, but if you have linear system with millions or billions of unknowns, then you need to use special tools. And today we will talk about uh, methods which work for small and medium-sized problems. So we basically assume that the matrix is stored in the memory, and we can we have access to the elements of the matrix. There are cases when you need to solve a linear system, but we do not have access to the elements of the matrix. So there is a separate question how, how to solve linear system if you do not know what are the elements. Or computing the elements is just a problem, because it's n squared. So this is just, again, this is for sure from school. Um, so how we solve linear systems? A linear system means you have linear equations and you put it in the matrix form. That's what you have to know. But okay, let's give a three times three example. So we have three variables, x, y, z, and three equations, it's okay. And we put zeros here, so the matrix will be two, three, zero, two, zero, three, and so on. This is, so the matrix is the way how we call linear systems. Okay, so very clear, and I have exercise before. And the matrix notation, this is the product of the matrix times the column vector, and all vectors by default are column vectors. Uh, and a times zero is all that. This is the matrix form of the linear system. It doesn't help much. We still want to find x, y, and z. Um, sorry, I'm going to have to press on each slide. In the break, I will fix all the others. So, a little bit about notation. So, we have unknowns, we have equations. So, if you have number of equations equal to the number of unknowns, the matrix is square. So this is just a square linear system, so a square matrix. So if you have more equations than unknowns, so then which you call an open determined system. So basically, well, in the general case, it doesn't have a solution. And you need to define what you mean by the solution of an open determined system of linear equations. So generically, no solution in exact mean Exact arithmetic, uh, it might have a solution if it's a so called consistent linear system. Uh, but in, when you use floating point, of course, you will not be able to get the exact solution. And you need to define what, what, what do you mean by the solution of a, of a determined linear system. Typically, it's understood 
the certain well, the standard way in the least square sense. So you want to find x such that the norm of the difference between a times u here and f is as minimum as possible, and taking different norms, you get in fact different solutions, and the choice of norm depends on the application. So well, the, the most straightforward is the least squares, uh, but least squares is basically an assumption that the error between the left side and the right side has Gaussian normal distribution. And that may not be the case, for example, when you have the day when you have some outlines, so you have, well, everyone probably have done this, you, you have to fit the line to, to a two-dimensional point cloud, and if you have one outlier, the mean square will be not so good, but if you minimize instead of the N2 norm, if you minimize N1 norm, then such, such norm is not very sensitive to outliers, and it's related to our discussion about compressed sensing somewhere in the beginning of this course. So this is important that you have to Define what you mean by the solution, and this depends typically on the application. But in general, it's both over determined system of linear equation. Uh, the opposite case when the number of unknowns is less than the number, um, is larger than the number of equations, it means generically there are more, uh, the, the, the number of solutions is infinite, they form a linear, uh, linear sub, uh, affine subspace, uh, and then again, you need to define what you mean by the solution, so you have to incorporate your prior knowledge about the problem. So which of possible solutions is better? So one, again, possible choice is the selection of the solution with the minimum possible norm, so-called minimum norm solution, which gives you exact nice formula, but uh, it's not maybe the case. For example, in English processing, a much more reasonable assumption would be that <coughs> The solution looks like an image, right? So you can encode it, for example, using total variation, or maybe, I don't know, even you can encode it using observations, using, for example, distribution and like, games or something like that. So there are many options for that, but of course, it makes things much more complicated. So uh, let's consider square matrix. So when, in the main question, of course, the theoretical question, where, when the solution exists. So probably you all know this finite okay, for some reason it's translated, but that's not the question. So this probably you all have heard, when the determinant is not equal to zero. Mm, but this is not a practical definition for large matrices. Uh, can anyone give an explanation why this is a bad way of checking uh, consistency? Of a linear system, the, the determinant is not equal to zero. Computation uh, error. Mm, okay, what is more expensive? Uh, compute the solution of a linear system or compute the determinant of, uh, of a matrix? Determinant. Uh, no, you're not right. Uh, precision is close, right? So, yeah. yeah. Well, well it's considered the simplest case would be considered the diagonal matrix, for example, with all the diagonal entries equal to 2 or, or, or 10. Then the determinant will be 10 to the power 100, or it would be okay if we're consistent, let's say it's 0 0.1, right? And this the matrix is 1,000, so the determinant is 10 to minus 1,000, so which is, even in for full double precision, is numerically zero. Uh, and then it would be difficult. So basically, if you want to say the determinant is small, it's difficult uh, to measure the smallness of the determinant because typically it's 10 to minus What, in fact, has the more practical meaning. It's not the value of the determinant, but the value of the logarithm of the determinant. But again, if it's 10 to minus 1,000, the log of the determinant, okay, let's use 10 for the base, <laughs> then it would be minus 1,000. So what's minus 1,000? Is this zero or not? Again, if you have the matrix which has only one over 10 on the diagonal, this is a very good matrix, actually. The solution is just multiply the right-hand side by all, by 10. There's no problem, but the determinant is very small. 
So, no reason. But actually, this problem seems much more important. And the determinant, actually, computation of the determinant, I don't know if I do not forget, uh, computation of the determinant in the right way. If you do it like in a minor expansion, like you take the first one, that would be exponential in the number of, uh, in the dimension of the matrix. Like what you do, well, not in school, but when you first encounter the determinant, like the first row is minor expansion. This is exponential, which is well, something like 2 to the power n. But if you use the smarter way, you can do it in the end cubic direction. That's a question how it will replicate it. And that there are applications when you need to solve log log uh, complete logarithm of the determinant and its gradient. So this, is, uh, this, this has application in optimization and empirical void patterns a lot. So logarithm of the determinant is actually an important for that function. <coughs> but the determinant itself is more or less useless and unless this is a two by two matrix or maybe three times. So matrix A has full map. This is a much nicer property and how to quantify this, by the way, full map is of the matrix. Any guesses? Oh, basically it's okay. So this is uh, theoretically you can look at single values. Yeah, so single values play a crucial role. So, and there are different scales of linear problems. So, so basically, every linear system with matrix of size less than 10,000 is a small problem because it fits into the memory. You can probably, and if you only need to solve this linear system once, you just compute the matrix, solve it, and so on. So, if you need to solve such linear systems many times, maybe a certain optimization procedure, and you really want speed, then you can use fast methods, but if it's only once, there is no big reason to develop specialized methods for solving such linear systems. So it's called dense matrix. It doesn't have any additional structure, just store the all the elements and gather. So for medium scale problems, from well, basically the things that can be handled on a on a personal computer, a notebook. Uh, so basically ten thousand and up to million, maybe ten millions. Of course, you can easily count that you cannot store the full matrix. So in this case, you, you have to store the matrix in this structured form. So typically, this is a sparse matrix. So the matrix that has a lot of zeros, and there are special formats to represent the sparse matrix, we will talk about it in, in, in a separate lecture. So sparse matrix, or certain structure, so it takes not all of n squared, not n squared elements to store the matrix, but fewer number of Okay, this, this representation really complicates solution of linear systems. And if you go to 10 to the power 8 billions, and I think that the record numbers are now structured plus 10 to 11, something like that, probably. Uh, and then you typically use this structure, but you need, you cannot do it on the laptop because even storing the solution vector is not possible. So even the solution cannot be stored in the memory. So you need to have distributed storage, and this is done using uh, computational class. So you have many nodes. Each node stores part of the solution. These nodes talk, talk to each other and solve the linear systems in a parallel fashion using high-performance computing. Well, it's a separate uh, task. OK. But you need to do okay. Gigabyte is okay. So that's why I'm talking about 10 to 11. <laughs> Gigabyte is not so much. But you know, at least you need to store right hand side and, uh, uh, and the solution is like over. Well, it's not gigabyte, by the way. It's 8 gigabytes, okay. You, you close all your browsers or everything else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we have. Probably terabyte, right? So probably okay. But again, in solving sparse linear system, you never store two vectors. You just store five or six vectors. Yeah. So okay, here the number can be, of course, low. Have to be increased. Yeah. Uh, and that can be big. Yeah. So if you so long, <laughs> I have a lot of. Um, quite a lot of work on solving partial differential equations, and there 
such parts may be assist to harm directly from the discretization of large uh, physical system. For example, you have an aircraft, you have to represent it by small well, not small voxels, but patches, and you have to uh, have patches of different sizes for different um, parts, even for small ones. And also you have to have a three dimension. This, 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 these are these are really big systems. But again, if you just solve an optimization problem, you might have really large large scale system or inverse problems and so on. Yeah. So for structure, so we will talk separately about that. But okay, this is my favorite example, and we will use it many times over sparse and very structured matrix. Who knows what it is, but what is this matrix? Who recognizes this matrix? Second yeah, this is this is the simplest discretization of the second derivative, also 